My name is Joe Jurek. I'm the growth leader with Culture Shock, and I had the honor of facilitating workshops, leadership development sessions, and roundtable discussions at TCIA's Winter Management Conference in the beautiful country of Barbados. So in the first one, we talked about sales and marketing and how it's important to keep a scrappy entrepreneur's mindset even as your business grows quite a bit. We talked about Fiverr, this global freelance marketplace, and how there's something called Vouch that allows you to send out a request for video testimonials. Got a little bit into SEO and SEM and some digital marketing stuff. And I think at the more elementary level, uh, a big takeaway that some folks had taken advantage of and others hadn't was doing social media ads and social media boosting because it's one of the most cost-effective ways to get your message out quickly. And if you create a post on Facebook for 20 or $40, you can then set a perimeter around where you are, five miles, 10 miles, 50 miles, whatever it is, narrow down your target audience and blast it out to 1,000, 2,000, 2,500 people. This could be for job postings. It could even just be for promotions or things about your business to promote awareness. We also then got into how having a strategic partnership or alliance with complementary service providers in your area is gonna do a couple things. It's gonna allow you most importantly to provide a more complete solution to your customers. Because if you're doing lawn care or tree care work in general, landscaping, but not snow removal, that's still a need that this person probably has. And by being able to make a recommendation of not just any other service provider in the area, but one that you formed a partnership with and feel good associating with. So somebody who is top tier and matches the level of experience or brand that you have. It's a better experience for your customers. It's also then going to result in referrals coming back your way when that service provider inevitably does the same. There's things in the community that you can do as well. And we talked about some grassroots marketing efforts, speaking at different trade shows. Didn't really get into every door direct mail and flyers and radio as much. They were mentioned, but it just seems like there's more cost-effective ways to market your business nowadays. The ideas that came out of this one were solid. I only hit on as many as I can remember off the top of my head. The key sentiment that came from this roundtable discussion is think differently about how you're promoting your business. A lot of it comes down to the relationships, the people around you, getting the word out, and you don't need to invest too heavily to help drive more people to your business. It's really more about meeting the demand and scaling in a way or having the capacity on your team to be able to satisfy that so you don't ultimately give a bad experience. A hot topic in one of the next roundtable discussions was workforce challenges and solutions. And this went in a lot of different directions. And I think we, we saw some folks really make progress in the way that they were thinking about this because some of the initial thoughts were around, well, younger generations, they don't have the same work ethic or they don't wanna be hands-on. They only wanna work certain days, want these exceptions and this and that. And the problem isn't people in the younger generation. The problem is more us not realizing what's most important to younger people and how, yes, money matters. The livelihood and well-being and being able to provide absolutely matters. But having a cool Google-esque inspired office with free snacks and free coffee and things like that, it's nice. It might help you attract more, but it's not really going to help you retain. And it's often a thin veil for dysfunction and other issues that you have with your culture. And if you really want to hire and retain people, you just need to focus on creating an inclusive culture where people feel cared for, where there's vulnerability-based trust from their leaders, they're challenged to grow, and where they feel like they're a part of something. Their input matters. This all goes back to listening. It was a common theme that came up over and over and over again throughout the week. A few tips that were shared during the session were also during the interview process, have somebody come and work for a day or two. Maybe even before you determine a wage, you can tell them to set them out for the first few days and say, this is a trial period. Not just for us to determine if you get it uh, and have the capability to do the job, but if you really want it, because it's so important to set crystal clear expectations in the beginning. You can always reset them, but especially when making a new hire, by having them come and spend a couple days on a job site with you, they get a taste of what it's really going to be like. And you just need to sit them down 
before you shake hands and agree to accept an offer or present an offer and say, is this what you really want? Talked about referral chains. Usually some of the best folks are associated in some way with existing team members. So you can offer some sort of incentives. And one company here actually said that after somebody has stayed for 90 days, if it was person and employee referred, that employee that made the referral would get a hundred bucks. If they stayed six months, that employee would get 500 bucks. It's a fair amount of money. And it, it, that would change the habit of a lot of employees to think, who else can I bring to be a part of this with us? They're going to be happier because they have people that they already trust and know at work, but they're also going to be rewarded for it. And the $500 pales in comparison to the cost of hiring and training more people if somebody doesn't work out, especially in the tree care industry. It's looking the right places creatively to find folks that might be a good fit. A huge heavy topic in this one though, in addition to just creating the culture, was educating your team and helping them grow, not just as professionals or as team members, but as human beings. So when we were talking about how some companies have a 401k in place or a 401k match, not just putting it in place, but explaining it in a way people can understand because a lot of folks don't have that formal education or finance understanding. So we then talked about finance training, giving your team some baseline understanding of how to manage their finances, how things grow over time when you're making investments and how 401k is a great way to get started with that. When you expose your team to some sort of employee development and leadership training or whatever you decide is the best fit for you and your organization, it demonstrates to them your commitment to their long-term growth and that you're invested in their success, not just with you, but for the rest of their life. So I'd highly recommend, especially if you don't have an internal training team or anything like that at this point, or even the capacity to train them yourself, it's leverage others and outside experts to help them continue learning and growing. A sentiment that came up was, what if we invest in our people and they leave? And of course, you might've heard this one before, but what if we don't and they stay is the bigger issue. And one of the last things discussed was having an apprenticeship program. There's for a long time been stigma and just this perception that if you don't go to college, you're less than for some reason. And I personally experienced it. I didn't go to college and it was a blemish for a long time. It was something I felt almost like I needed to hide. And in recent years, it's not only become more acceptable, but even celebrated. That's not the only path. And in the tree care industry, in skilled trades, it can be both lucrative and rewarding. And by doing some sort of an apprenticeship program, even going to high schools and sharing what the industry is all about and what your organization is all about, you not only get people who are hungry and eager to learn and don't need to break old habits, rather form new ones that you get to help them build. You show them that there is another path to a happy life, a successful career without necessarily landing in a bunch of student loan debt. When hiring, there's three elements that you really want to look at. Cognitive is going to be somebody's skills, their experience, their background, or at very least their willingness and ability to learn. Core value fit. If their personal core values truly align with that of your organization, are you using those core values as a filter for all your decisions? Kind of unrelated topic, but a heavy one. And last but not least, we talked about something called Colby cognitive strengths or instinctive strengths, right? It's how people naturally get stuff done, their innate ability, because people may have been exposed to the same experiences. They may have the same core values, yet have a totally different way of doing things. And you can tell from Colby and working genius, and those are the two that, that really help measure not emotions or feelings or intelligence or anything like that, but really identify what sort of work is going to give somebody energy instead of stress? And what are their most natural strengths that they don't need to think about? They just happen naturally. We did a quick exercise where you wrote your first and last name with your dominant hand, and then you wrote your first and last name with your opposite hand. And with your opposite hand, you found it took longer, it was harder, and the results still kind of sucked. And we apply that thinking to when people just are aligned or aren't aligned with a role that meets those strengths. So somebody may be very hands-on. Somebody may be more of a visual person that comes into play when they're running a project or on a job site. And if you can determine that during the hiring process, it'll help you predict the future and if they're really going to like what they're doing or not. Again, there was a whole lot more, but in this short form version, hopefully that jump-started some thought, gave you some ideas and some things that you can run with 
And if you were at the conference, recapping with your team might have been a few things that you'd forgotten in there. The overarching sentiment out of all of this is that we need to be intentional in improving our self-awareness. We need to ask a whole lot more questions. Something that we talk about at Culture Shock is being more curiosity-led than advice-driven and being more interested than interesting. That's the most important thing as a leader, to get the most out of your people. Because the reality is, your teams have a whole lot more intelligence and capability than you probably give them credit for, or that they have the opportunity to demonstrate and grow into if you're stepping in too often, not delegating with confidence. On that note though, when we talked about delegating, think about this a little bit differently. It's not just delegating internally, you can delegate externally as well. You can delegate to technology, to artificial intelligence, and to freelancers. So there's an exercise where we talked about the top 10 time-consuming activities each person is doing right now and compared that against the 10 most valuable activities that you should be spending your time on. Because as your role evolves, so does the place that you offer the most value. It's difficult for people to delegate because it gets a whole lot harder before it gets easier. People have been burned, right? They tried to delegate unsuccessfully and then they gave up or they delegated and then just stepped away. We need to trust, but then validate. We need to train first, make sure that they're set up for success. And instead of just saying, does that make sense? Or do you get it? With total sincerity, say, I wanna make sure that I communicated that effectively, or I wanna make sure that I explained that clearly. Can you kinda explain back to me what you got from that? Put the ownership on you, not the receiver of the information, and clarify understanding so that that way we are on the same page. There's a lot of times where when I've done that, somebody repeated back and I was like, oh man, that, that was nowhere near what I said. So my bad. And it gave us a chance to make sure we were crystal clear on what the expectations were. Folks, that's it for now. There was a lot more, but you probably did a better job of taking notes on it than I had the opportunity to. I hope this was helpful. I wish you nothing but the best. Truly incredible group of human beings. There's something special about TCIA I made some really good connections and relationships with so many people here. And I thank you sincerely for having me. I wish you nothing but the absolute best. And if I can ever help in any way, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks.